How did people more than 3,000 years ago manage to carve stone giants out of the ground that still leave us in awe? How did the inhabitants of antiquity manage to transform loads weighing tons into architectural wonders without the use of modern machinery? Well, perhaps not at all. The story of the ancient city of Mycenae's origins tells us that it was clearly not created by ordinary people. But how should we classify the legends about gods, heroes, and monstrous beasts from today's perspective? Could it be that all the adventurous legends ultimately have a kernel of truth? Or do we simply tend to hopelessly underestimate the abilities of our distant ancestors? On a small hill in Greece near the plains of Argos lies a stone testimony to time that opens the doors to days long past. With its fantastic myths of origins, the ancient city of Mycenae provides a deep insight into the beliefs of its time, and also shows the outstanding role played by Mycenaean in culture in the classical Greek era. However, the true origins of the Mycenae are unknown. All that is certain is that the once magnificent city was finally abandoned in the 3rd century BC. According to Greek mythology, however, the city's roots go back to Perseus, the son of Zeus and one of the most famous heroes of all. According to legend, the hero settled here to drink some water that had accumulated in a mushroom. With this in mind, it is not really surprising that the ancient Greek word mykes means nothing other than mushroom. Alternatively, Perseus's so-called ortpond fell to the ground here, which the ancient Greeks also called mykes, and which refers to the metal fitting on the tip of the sword scabbard. When Perseus Lee finally set off for the ancient city of Tyrans, he is said to have ordered some cyclops to build the walls of Mycenae with stones so heavy that no human could ever move them. The one-eyed monsters complied with the hero's request and gave the world a unique site that was to become one of the most prosperous centers of Greece in the course of time. The descendants of Perseus ruled here for three generations. The last in this heroic royal line was Eurytheus who was succeeded by Atreus. His son, Agamemnon, led the Greeks in the legendary Trojan War, and in view of all these mythological figures, it is astonishing, to say the least, that the descriptions of Mycenae in the legends actually correspond to reality. And why the imposing walls are suspected of having been created by supernatural beings, as mentioned above, becomes clear when we take a closer look at their overwhelming dimensions and unusual elaboration. Appropriately, the technique is known as Cyclopean construction, and it is based on very large, irregularly shaped stones that are carefully stacked on top of each other. However, the fact that the walls of Mycenae not only required great care, but also unimaginable strength, is shown by the fact that some of their blocks weighed up to 120 tons. The Overwhelming Lion Gate of Mycenae when Mycenae was a strong military and economic power in the Bronze Age between 1400 and 1200 BC, new magnificent buildings were also constructed during this period of prosperity. First and foremost was the impressive Lion Gate. On the one hand, this formed the main entrance to the city, and on the other, it is no less than the oldest known monumental sculpture in Europe. In order to create the stone gate in the middle of the 13th century BC, its creators had to fit four massive monolith blocks together precisely, without the use of mortar, mind you. The so-called lintel, that is, the horizontal upper edge of the gate, ultimately gives the structure its illustrious name. Here, two detailed lines leap out at us, facing each other and enthroned on two sacrificial altars that form the base of a central pillar. And while this ancient relic, which forms an opening 3 meters high and 3 meters wide, has been largely preserved, an essential detail has been lost over time. As you can easily see, the heads of the cats of prey have been lost. It is suspected that they were made of bronze or the ceramic material stetite. But unfortunately, the excavations have so far failed to bring the lion skulls back to light. What has now been brought to light, however, is the mythical story of the awe-inspiring gate's origins. It goes without saying that it is not the work of an ordinary construction team, but goes back to the aforementioned King Atreus. In Greek mythology, however, he is not only known as an architecturally adept ruler, but also as a member of the dynasty that brought down the curse of the gods with its shameful deeds. 
However, it is unlikely that the archaeologist Kirikos Pitikos was also cursing when he rediscovered the Lion Gate of Mycenae in 1841. Once discovered, the irreplaceable testimony to time was then completely uncovered and rebuilt. However, while the Lion Gate had eluded the gaze of researchers for centuries, other structures presented themselves much less shyly. This applies in particular to the Treasure House of Atreus, which was conveniently never completely buried and could, therefore, never be forgotten. After the most magnificent of all the royal tombs preserved in Mycenae had already been visited by several researchers and relieved of one or two fragments, Heinrich Schleiman decided in 1874 to finally awaken the treasure house from its historical slumber. We now know that the domed tomb was built around 1250 BC and that it was the largest circular dome in the world for more than 1300 years. The name Treasure House probably goes back to the precious grave goods that were placed here with the deceased. However, as the valuables were completely stolen over time, we can only speculate today about the burial treasures that were once enthroned here. The Controversial Gold Mask of Agmanon Sometimes the treasure house of Atreus is also referred to as the Tomb of Agmanon. But the bottom line is that the mythological military leader has also immortalized himself in the archaeological legacy in other ways. Of course, it was no coincidence that Heinrich Schleiman was searching for the lost traces of the past in Mycenae. The German explorer, who had made a fortune in the California gold rush, dreamed of bringing the legendary city of Troy back to reality. Its existence had previously only been recorded in Homer's epics Iliad and Odyssey. Schleiman literally clung to the literary tales and was firmly convinced that they had a kernel of truth, and he was proved right. But although Schleiman is still celebrated as the discoverer of Troy, it was actually the Briton, Frank Calvert, who first identified the hill of Hisselark near the town of Brunabaski as the possible location of the lost site. As fate would have it, the two men crossed paths at the Dardanelles in August 1868 and Schleiman found out about Calvert's red-hot lead. However, as the Britons' funds were exhausted, he persuaded Schleiman to continue his excavations around the Hisselerk. Schleiman gratefully accepted his colleague's information and promptly passed off the idea of digging there as his own. In 1871, Schleiman finally received the corresponding excavation license. However, the work was not initially a complete success. Despite all his efforts, it took another two years before Schleiman brought the first Trojan artifacts to light. In the end, however, the archaeologist decided to secretly smuggle the magnificent gold treasure of Priam out of the country, thus violating the agreement he had previously made with the government of the Ottoman Empire. A morally dubious step, but one that finally gave Schleiman the recognition in archaeological circles that he had longed for so long. In the period that followed, however, his urge to research was by no means limited to Troy. As already mentioned, it's also extended to Mycenae. Once again, Schleiman's motivations went back to the works of Homer, and once again, he recorded a discovery that had previously only existed in ancient myths and legends. In detail, this refers to the breathtaking gold mask which, according to Schleiman, depicts none other than the legendary King Agmanon. But that's not all. For while the artifact was discovered in a tomb near the Lion Gate, it also contained an unusually large skeleton, which Schleiman believed to be Agmanon himself. Between Legend and Reality So, was this the final proof that all the legends from Greek mythology were true? That there really were heroic legendary figures of divine descent back then, and that the walls of Mycenae really were built by Cyclops? Well, even in the more alternative camps, this has not been conclusively clarified. According to this, the supposed gods and monsters would in fact have been aliens and their spawn. As the people of antiquity simply could not have been able to create such magnificent sites, they were dependent on extraterrestrial help, according to the theory. But even apart from extraterrestrial intelligences, the interpretation of mythological traditions is anything but uncontroversial. Whether it's Plato's Atlantis story or the Trojan War, what was once considered a historical, factual account is now increasingly being labeled as purely fictional. As a result, discussions about the correct interpretations are still ongoing, 
but what is the situation in the case of Argmanon's skeleton? Well, according to our current state of knowledge, the tomb and its contents are dated to the middle of the 16th century BC. However, as researchers generally assume that the legends about the Trojan War, and therefore also about Agmanon, only emerged much later, the consensus has prevailed that the mask must have belonged to a Mycenaean prince of a previous dynasty. And you must also have heard the following. A simple click on the subscribe button is enough to never miss another exciting video from us. So feel free to join our community and stay up to date from now on.